I eat that already? Man, I'm still hungry. Okay, so this is a piece of uh, lapis uh, lazuli, lapis that uh, uh, the individual got from uh, Afghanistan while he was there. And he wants to cut it into a uh, cushion-shaped uh, gemstone, so of about 12 millimeters by about 12 millimeters. So there's a lot of rough here, so we'll cut a piece off. As you examine the rough, it's kind of, you know, it's got kind of a sandwich, you know, the good blue lapis on the outside and then the uh, lower quality in the center. Uh, it's got a fracture here. This part is darker. This part is uh, lighter. So we'd want something this side up here or on this side, there's a fracture here. There's a vein of uh, pyrite coming through, although there is pyrite th throughout, which is, and most people like. Fracture here, lighter side again. So we want to cut our stone probably from this side, making this the face. It's going to be an opaque stone, so we just have to worry about cutting the upper half, the crown of the stone, and polishing it. So we can get uh, 12 millimeters no problem uh, and avoid this fracture. We do have to come in a little ways because of this, so we're going to have to come into about here and cut out a piece that along here that will give us a nice 12 by 12 stone. So it's an unusual looking stone. But let's go ahead and cut it and uh, with the trim saw get a piece out and then we'll make it 12 by 12 using this side and this will be the crown. We'll probably cut it in half here and so that's the piece we're going to use. So let me take it to the trim saw and cut off a piece. Lapis lazuli or just commonly called lapis has been treasured by humans for thousands of years. Lapis was prized in the ancient civilizations in Mesopotamia, Egypt, China, Greece, and Rome. And although lapis can be found in a number of locations around the world, the most famous and largest source for lapis is Afghanistan, and where lapis has been mined for over 6,500 years and is still mined today. So I'll use my trim saw to cut a piece of this lapis for this project. And I use an Ameritool trim saw with a four inch centered blade. Okay, with our trim saw, I sliced off a piece and then cut it in half. And of the two pieces, this is uh, the better, darker, no uh, fractures in it. So this is what we'll use for the crown, that blue. We'll get the blue and then maybe a little bit of this uh, lighter colored, but that'll be on the bottom of the stone so it won't, it won't cause a problem. All right, let me go ahead and dop it up and we'll start working on our lapis. Now as far as a design, I found this one called Split Facet Baryon Cushion. I found it on the database, the facetdiagrams.org website, uh, just a big large database of designs. This design was created by Long & Steel, uh, very, very well-known uh, gem cutters and designers, and they made it available for any cutter to use this design. Now, I only need the top part or the crown of this design because, of course, lapis is opaque, light can't pass through it, so I don't need to follow the cutting instructions on the bottom part or pavilion of this design at all. I'll just use a couple of step cuts on the bottom part of this gemstone to ensure that there's a girdle and that our jeweler can attach the prongs uh, to the girdle when the stone is mounted into a piece of jewelry. Okay, so we're going to cut the uh, upper half of our stone first since it's opaque and since it light can't pass through it and we want to make sure the crown uh, is cut properly. The 
pavilion part, the bottom half, we'll just flatten that out. It won't make any difference. So we'll do the uh, upper half first. And you can see that the, uh, the nice blue did not go all the way through this stone. It's only in the upper part. So this will be the uh, crown. So the way we do a cushion cut, which is pretty much square, has rounded a little bit, but, but it's kind of a square. Uh, so to preform it, what we want to do is put our index at 96 and one of the flat side horizontal with that and lock it in and then we can preform it to the size we want. Okay, I used my uh, 210 grit diamond topper lap and uh, preformed, uh, roughly preformed our stone here. So our lot piece is now, it's a little bigger than I, the customer needs, but, uh, but that'll take care of the preforming. Now I'll work on, uh, I think I'll continue to work on the girdle and get that set. So I'll work with a finer lap now. Okay, I've got our uh, lot piece pretty well preformed and uh, I'll continue to go over the girdle a little bit more and then start on the uh, rest of the of the crown. So I finished going over our lapis with my 12M lap, which is about a 1500 grit. Uh, it's a sintered lap, so now I'll use uh, 3000 uh, grit diamond on a bat lap and go over our lapis one more time. Then we'll be ready to polish it. Okay, I've gone around the girdle with my 3000 grit uh, diamond on a uh, bat lap and I've decided to swap out and use my lightning laps and the reason is there's no not having any problem with the girdle this stone doesn't have any fractures on it but if it did the uh, slurry from a bat lap uh, from the diamond paste would uh, get sucked into the stone and make like a black line so as I go to the crown I'll use my uh, lightning lap so the lightning laps, I, I have toppers for lightning laps, uh, thin topper. You can buy them uh, as solid laps that don't need a backing. So this is a, the 3000 grit uh, lightning lap topper. They're all color coded. So then they go up to 50K and in fact get the uh, Franklin Frolic, I got 100K lightning lap. So. We use the lightning laps and continue to work on this stone. I've gone over the lapis with a uh, my 3K lightning lap. And so now I'll go over it with uh, probably the 14K uh, lightning lap and then the 50K. And then we'll be ready to polish the uh, table. I finished polishing the, uh, the crown, the upper half of our lapis with uh, 50,000 grit uh, diamond uh, lightning lap. So now I'll set the stone up and cut the uh, table and polish the table. Then, uh, then I will cut off a part of the bottom part and probably use a step cut uh, just on the, on the back side because your light can't pass through it anyway. So let me go ahead and cut the uh, table and see how that looks. Okay, I finished polishing the uh, table. So now I'll set the stone up to transfer so that we can cut the... Uh, uh, some of the back part, the bottom part off of this. Okay, I put the dop on with the two-part epoxy onto the top part crown of our stone and so now uh, I'm going to cut with my trim saw right along here um, and get rid of all this. Uh, this is lower quality, this is the higher quality. So I'll cut off here and then I'll use some step cuts on the back, the uh, bottom part of our lot piece and uh, just make it kind of a couple of steps and flat because it's, uh, you won't see the pavilion of this stone because it's not, because it's opaque. So that's where I'm gonna trim it. So I'm preforming the bottom half of our lapis with a 210, uh, 210 grit uh, diamond topper. So I just decided uh, to put two steps and I picked the angle of uh, 50 degrees for the first step using the same uh, index teeth as the girdle. So this is uh, the 50 degree, and then this is the 40 degree, and then I'll cut it like, a, like cutting a table, so there'll be two steps on the bottom. I'll make them 
I'll bring them down a little further because I want to get rid of all of this uh, lower quality loppy. So, and right now it's about, I've got about 1.5 millimeters for this girdle. I'm going to bring it down to about 0.5 and then two steps and uh, kind of a table on the bottom. So now I'll continue to preform it. Okay, I finished polishing the bottom half of our stone and I cut out the uh, that lower quality lighter uh, lapis so it's the whole stone is going to be a darker this darker uh, shade of the lapis so now I'll soak it in the uh, acetone and uh, and we'll weigh it and measure it and send it off to the customer so lapis is pretty easy to cut and polish no major issues uh, fortunately this lapis had no fractures so it made it very easy if there had been fractures, it would have been a problem using diamond paste or even oxides, uh, the paste to cut and polish the stone. Because if you have lapis with fractures and you're using diamond paste or oxide paste, it creates kind of a black slurry on the lap. And that slurry will get sucked into the fracture and it's either very difficult or maybe impossible to remove. So even though I didn't see any fractures on the stone, I avoided the whole issue with slurry by using the lightning laps, which are a diamond matrix lap, and uh, they don't create any slurry at all. The design I used was pretty straightforward. Long and steel designs are, are, the ones I've cut have been no issues and very, very easy to follow. Well, well explained in the comments what you need to do. So I believe that any a cutter of any skill level would have no problem with this design. And actually, I only had to cut the top part or crown of this design because, again, the pavilion uh, design wouldn't have mattered because you, light doesn't pass through this lapis. So uh, I'd like to hear from you in the comments. Let me know what you think of this piece of lapis. And let me know if you, uh, you ever cut lapis or opaque, opaque stones at all. And, of course, as always, happy fasting, everyone.